So today we are going to build a firewall based on uh, this little computer case from Chief Tech. Um, we've also got a mainboard and uh, the important part is that this mainboard has uh, two network adapters so we can route between two different networks. Um, we also have a passive cooling and two slots for memory. Um, so let's take a little bit uh, look of the components. Um, over here we've got um, a power supply. Uh, this power supply is very small and it will be placed at the bottom inside of that uh, case. Um, we also have a SATA cable, which we are not going to need. So let's get rid of that. Then we have um, the power cable. So this part is going towards the power supply. And this part is going to feed the main board. Um, that's also going on the main board. And those parts are if you want to um, add further disks, so you can uh, power supply for our SATA cables, or SATA disks, and here we have IDE, so for all um, CD disks, etc. Then we also do have um, some memory, and we do have uh, the lid, which is going to become to get here. And at the top left, you can see a bunch of screws, which are part of the case. So we are now going to start by disassembling this one, taking off the, the top lid and the back lid, and then also this part underneath. So first, uh, you have to remove four screws. I've already removed those four screws and put them in here. Okay. So make sure those four are gone. And then you can start pulling those out. This may get a little bit complicated, so it's best if you use another one of those screwdrivers and just get under here and try working it up. Then we do it for the other side too. And now we can remove those four screws here. Okay, and now you can see at the inner part we have uh, three different cables and I've already placed them under here. Um, and you will see later on why, because um, if we are going to place the main board, it's going to get like this in here. And if you take a look at this part, here, that's where we are going to connect those cables to. Those are the jumpers we are going to place those cables in. So we make sure those are on the opposite side of uh, the front button. So they are coming up here. And then I'm just going to take um, a little bit of tape and I'm going to just fix them over here so they don't get uh, in a way when doing the work. Um, I've already also prepared another part, which is I've picked those four silver screws and those four silver screws are going, um, if we are going to place that over here, we have those four parts, and then we are going to take some screws and uh, fix it. So make sure you have those four in there. And once that's done, we can uh, start by uh, adding the components. First of all, we need the back panel. And here again, we best use the main board. Place it like we want to insert it. It's going to be like this. 
And then you make sure that it's properly aligned, so like this. So you can just make sure that those two align with those two and those three with those three. And we simply push that in from the back like this and make sure it crunches like makes a small sound when it's locked in place. Ah, come on. Okay. And it's all in all four ends. Okay. So now the next part is to place in the main board. Don't start with a power supply. That's not going to work. So you can again see four parts where we need to place screws in and those align with those four. So you push it in and then push it to the left and make sure that they all come out properly here like this. And for me it's best to um, just use the passive cooling and push it to the left until you see um, one of those align with the screws. And then we are going to um, add in the screws. We Okay, and now you can see why I've put those cable over here, because we are going to run them over here. Let's see if that's going to be long enough. If not, we are going to have to change the plan, because it looks to me like that's not going to work at all. Okay, so change of plan. Just going to pull those back in here. simply just going to connect them directly okay so now we have to connect the cables for this I've been taking a look at the manual and you can see where we have to place the different jumpers for it to work you just put it like here the power switch it's the first one I'm just going to get over here and then the others so let's do that First we are going to select the power switch. Okay. So the power switch is going to the two left ones, which is over here. So like this. Then we have the HDD LED. And the HDD LED is going over here to the top right. And then we also do have the power LED plus and the power LED minus. And the plus is going to the right side. So like this. And those two go to the top right, uh, to the bottom right, I mean. Okay. So I think since those are plus and minus, I'm going to flip those around to always have the white one on the left. Okay, so they are all in the same order, white left, white left, white left. Now we just have to scrub it down here somewhere. So it's a little bit out of the way now we're going to just leave it like this. Okay, um, the next step is to insert the power. So we need to use this one 
and there are two ways we could place it. We could place it like this, or we could place it like this, because you can see that this is going up a lot, and this could have problems um, with these parts on here. So we're not going to put it like this, we are going to put it in like this. So we just place it on here. And then we are going to pick another four screws. So now we are going to use such a screw with a little hat on on top of it and we are going to use that particular screw to insert into the four corners so let's focus in back on the yep and just place in the four screws and already rock solid so I'm just going to put in three and that's enough this one over here I always have problems reaching so I'm just going to leave that one free because it's as you can see it's rock solid already we are going to place the cables a little bit to the left that it's not touching parts too much okay so now that is done um, the next logic part for me would be to insert the memory so just make sure if you buy a mainboard it usually tells you the speed on the mainboard let's see where it says Yeah, there you can see it. Um, here it tells you um, that the DDR is DDR3 RAM. So we've bought some DDR3 RAM. And we are going to just open that up and insert it. You can see on the back it says DDR3. that and just put it in there I'm going to pick this one because the other one is easier to reach later on and of course I need to upgrade it okay so let's get rid of those cables and there we go so the memory is in now that we've got the memory in we've got the back all working we can now uh, try to connect the power so like I told you before, this part goes to the power supply, which is here, and you can see the bob, that little thing going, and we have that here as well. So we are going to place it like this towards us, and put it in here. That's easiest done when, when it's still standing up. So now it's in there, and this part is going on here. And again, you can see this little knob on the front, and we also have this one here. So we do it like this. OK, 
Okay, so we bend this down a little bit. Um, those we actually don't really need. Um, these three can be used to power SATA. So for example, if you want to put a disk in here, uh, we are going to pick a memory stick and just put the operating system on the memory stick and put it in the back. Um, you could also use um, this one. Basically, uh, let's just close it up like this. You can put it on here and then you can place a disk over here and you can buy an extension case. And um, this extension case is a little bit like this, but it's just having a little metal part. I will post it, the link in the description. And um, it's going to look something like this. It's like that, th that thick. And you can place a disc in there. So we are not going to do that. So let's go back. Like this. So since we are not going to need them, we can pretty much um, roll them up. Now, if you have zip ties, that would be perfect, but we can just uh, roll them up like this. And just place them here somewhere in the side where they are not going to matter too much. Now we also have this cable. And this cable is going to end up here. Again, we have the knob at the front and a knob here at the front, so let's put that in. And also place it a little bit hidden. Okay, so now it's getting time to close the case. So let's screw that back up. If you want to, you could also run the cable above it, but it's not really needed. And it's not going to work above it if you uh, only have those lids. So let's take the four screws. Okay, before we are going to um, really shut it all down, we are going to make a power test. Uh, power supply also needs to be screwed in, which I kind of forgot, but that's not going to be a problem. So we need to place this power supply. Just need to push it in there. And it's easiest to do if you then take the opposite side of this one and plug it in already without, of course, plugging it into the socket. We just put it in here like this. And you can see the... in there that's going to keep it in place at least enough for us to be able to screw in the two screws little tiny screws those are smaller and thinner than all the other screws you can see that one in comparison it's way thinner this one so we are going to use those and we need two of these And when you've got the first screwed in, the second one usually aligns. So let's take another look. No, that's placed badly. So 
now you can see the second one aligns properly. And now we need that second screw. And put that in as well. Now we can remove that. If the first one is in there, we've aligned it properly and then it's easier to do without the cable in there. So of course, this one needs to be connected to the power supply over here. And that's what we are going to do. Okay, so you can see here, that's going to end up over here. And it's just going to match one way, like this. Okay, so this cable, we are not going to need that as well. So let's just move that in here. And just make sure that this is not going to touch the metal. Just put it in here like this. And now before closing the lid, we are going to test it. So I've already prepared the power supply and plugged it in. And just pull it in there. Then you take a look at the front and we are going to press the start button. And if this is going to get green, it's all working. And as you can see, it's going to change to green. And we could also hear the little beep sound, which is going to appear when the device is started. And you could hear it again so let's shut it down again and now we are going to close it and then we are going to start installing an operating system so first let's put that over here and screw in the four screws we have okay now let's put on the top This side first, just push it in there, and let's do the second one. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now all we need to do is to prepare our USB flash disk, and put on the operating system we want to place on here, and then start booting from it. So um, in this example, I'm going to be using two USB sticks. This one as well uh, on here. This one I will make a bootable device and we are going to boot off that one. And this one will be the basically the static device, um, which will basically be our hard disk. And we are going to um, boot from this disk and then install the operating system onto this disk. Okay, and I will see you in a few minutes on my laptop, and then I'm going to explain you how to create a bootable device so basically set this device up.